bow down and worship him now. How great, how awesome is he.
This morning's scripture comes from Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through 17. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh, to the living to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put the de to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. The spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. May God bless the hearing and the reading of his word. Last week we celebrated Pentecost, and I love Pentecost Sunday, if y'all didn't notice that. Um, it is like my happy time of all times. I love the Lenten season, and that just comes to the end of the Lenten season. And today is actually Trinity Sunday when we celebrate the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And in doing that, we've heard the Roman scripture, and we also have a scripture from John 3, 1 through 17. And we actually have a video this morning that's going to explain some stuff to us because we need explaining to. But I'm going to read John 3, verses 1 through 17 first. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a Jewish leader. He came to Jesus at night and he said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could do the miraculous signs you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered, 
I assure you, unless someone is born anew, it's not possible to see God's kingdom. Nicodemus asked, How is it possible for an adult to be born? It's impossible to enter the mother's womb for a second time and to be born, isn't it? Jesus answered, I assure you, unless someone is born of the water and the spirit, it is not possible to enter the kingdom of God. Whatever is born of flesh is flesh, and whatever is born of the spirit is spirit. Don't be surprised that I said to you, you must be born anew. God's spirit blows wherever it wishes. You hear its sound, but you don't know where it comes from or where it is going. It's the same with everything, everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said, how are these things? Jesus answered, you're a teacher of Israel and you don't know these things? I assure you that we speak about what we know and we testify about what we have seen, but you don't receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you don't believe, how will you believe me if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has gone up to heaven except for the one who came down from heaven, the human one. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so must the human one be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him won't perish, but will have eternal life. God didn't send his son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Sometimes we have things that we don't quite understand, don't we? And I will be preaching from up here today, and I apologize, but um, I did something bad yesterday. So I'm not going to talk about it. I just stood up. So um, She's going to fuss at me later. But uh, we have those moments where we have things that we don't understand. Well, we have a young man this morning. His name is Jake. And he is going to explain to us how to get to Bear Creek. Okay. I went down the road last week. And everything is tearing down. I need to put a new door in it. That Bear Creek? You know how to get there? Well, yeah. Um, you turn on the left and go uh, right straight to Bear Creek, and you get on a six-mile road, and then you turn back on a one-mile road. Bear Creek Road. Up. You turn on two six miles and go back on where you at. And then you go on one mile, and you go on one mile, and then you go on this mile and one mile. And you go, on, you jump back on another mile, and you go back on this mile, and you go back on that mile. And then you go Bear Creek Mile, you go on a bridge mile, and you turn on another bridge, go another Bear Creek. Um, so, um, there's a uh, turn on the west, and then there's a house, and and a bridge is on where the house is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if Jake had had too much to drink that morning. He almost turned his orange juice over, or but. How many of y'all can now get to Bear Creek? <laughs> That's a lot of miles. You go down the six-mile road and then the one-mile road and over the bridge and everything's hanging down. And I mean, we have no clue how to get there, do we? There's a lot of things that we don't understand. There's a lot of things that we haven't understood for a long time. I know this week the parents' biggest fear was would the kids do okay on their EOGs? And hopefully they did. And um, I was talking to Dirk, I guess it was Thursday night, and he was talking about his test. And I said, well, how was it? He said, it was okay. I said, was it really hard? He said, they asked me what three plus four is. I said, well, what is it? He said, seven. Like, duh. 
And I said, well, good. I said, were the rest of them that easy? He said, no. But that one, he knew. So we know if nothing else, he got that one. So, (laughs) but we don't understand things. And we try sometimes to make things a lot harder than they are. And I think little Jake was trying to make things a lot harder than they were. And in his little mind, he was telling us exactly how to get to Bear Creek. And I bet you, you could put him in a car and he could take you to Bear Creek. And he could show you exactly where to go. I love the thought that when I was in mental health, people would say, yeah, you go down here to Aunt Jane's chicken farm, and then you turn back to the right. And I'm like, okay, where's Aunt Jane's chicken farm? How far down is it? And they say, oh, it's tore down now. It ain't there no more. (laughs) How are you supposed to know? You don't understand things, and it frustrates you. I had somebody ask me this week, she says, how do you explain God allowing bad things to happen to people? How do you explain God allowing children to have cancer? How do you explain God allowing death? How do you explain God allowing the weather to be bad and people to get hurt? And I asked her, did she remember the first part of the Bible? And she said, yes. I said, how many storms were in the Garden of Eden? Well, none. I said, how many people got sick in the Garden of Eden? She said, none. I said, how many people died? None. I said, how much cancer was in the Garden of Eden or disease? She said, there was no disease in the Garden of Eden. I said, what happened to change that? She said, we sinned. I said, so is it God doing it or is it us doing it? What has changed? Has God changed or have we changed? When we were in the garden, there was nothing that could hurt us. God took care of us. But once man sinned, all of these things came about. God's not sitting in heaven with his hand on a button waiting and saying, hmm, let's see, I see Lee walking down there and there's a piano that's about to fall, so give it a second. She's walking, walking, walking. Ding! God doesn't do that to us. We do things to ourselves. We do things to our body. Environmentally, we've ruined our environment, and that's caused a lot of disease. We wonder about things because we look at them through the eyes of science. Everything has to work scientifically, right? There has to be a reason for everything. If it's not, then why is it there? Well, God must do it. What about God's love for us? Is that something that we can accept? Nicodemus goes to Jesus and he says, I don't understand, can you please tell me? And then Jesus tells him this thing about you have to be born again. It's not just about being born from your mother, but there has to be a different birth. You have to be born of the water and by the Spirit. You have to allow God to come into you and make a difference into your life. You have to have a knowledge that surpasses just scientific law. No, it doesn't make sense. But my love doesn't make sense. My grace doesn't make sense. But what does make sense is I love you. How many of us have a child who's ever done anything wrong? I know it's not Lee that did anything wrong. She will let you know that real quick. But we all have a child that at some point in time has done something that we wish they wouldn't have done that we would just like to reach over and just pinch them really good for, you know? But how many of us don't love that child now? How many of us, when that child did that, said, okay, we're done with you? We don't, never. We don't do that because our love for our children is completely unconditional. We accept them and we love them no matter what. Even when they mess up, even when they do things that we're not proud of, even when they say things that hurt us, We tell them that we love them. And even when we hurt, we still love them. That's the way God's love is. It's completely unconditional. How many of you have ever seen a puppy run up to somebody and they're so excited to see them and they lick their whole face? I love puppies because of that. Or a baby that toddles around and the baby is going to love on everybody because the baby doesn't know that it's not supposed to. We teach them that. 
That child's love is unconditional. Being born of the Spirit is wanting to look at people in that way where you're excited to see them when they walk in. You're excited to hug them. You're excited to let them know that you care. You don't have to lick them in the face, but just to let them know that you care and that you're excited that they're there. It's hard to understand God's love. It's hard to understand being born of the Spirit. It's hard to understand having a new life and new thoughts come into our mind and into our bodies. But when we do that, it changes us completely. We don't have those thoughts about flesh anymore. We have the thoughts of God. Flesh is just that. It's flesh. And it comes to an end at some point in time. But life is God's love. We deal with laws and science, things that we can see, things that are tangible. But God gives us grace and love, and we still don't understand. I think sometimes that God made it so simple, and we want to make it so hard that we just can't simply figure it out. It would be nice if we could say, well, God, I'm really bad, so you need to punish me for all the bad things that I've done. And if you punish me, and I feel like I've been punished enough, then I can say, Yes, God loves me because I've had the punishment that I need. But God says, you're mine. I shower you with love. I accept you no matter what. We shout out, I did wrong. And God says, but I'm your right. And I will save you. It's hard for us to understand. It's hard for us to accept. But when we're children, we're heirs of God. Can you imagine having what your family left you. Sometimes that's not a lot. Sometimes that's a whole lot. But God has more than we can ever imagine. God says that we're his heirs. We're his children and he loves us and we're precious to him. He says that when we come into heaven with him, that we will be like one and that we will share in that glory with him because we've shared in our life with him. We don't have to understand everything right now, but what we have to do is to try. Sometimes it's not in the understanding, but it's in the striving to understand that we find out what we need to know. God loved us so much that he came into the world. He didn't come to judge us, but he came that we might be saved through him. Folks, it's about love and it's about grace. It's about giving without getting. It's about accepting without having to be moved. It's about saying, yes, Lord, I understand and I accept. These things are not possible. They sound a little ridiculous. But if you say that's the way it is, Lord, then I believe. Amen.